yeah, it's quite a bit different to the, um, the weightlifting gyms in which athletes like myself spend most of our lives. So I think I'll just, uh, yeah, just soak it all in and try to remember it. as much of moments like this as I can because uh, um, really that's what the Olympics is all about, isn't it? It's a series of quite extraordinary moments and um, although I haven't really achieved the results that um, I and others had hoped for, um, I'll be able to leave with a pocket full of memories and perhaps remember some of those extraordinary moments and uh, um, yeah, I think that will be as rewarding uh, as any Olympic medal could be. And uh, as Diana mentioned, it might be a good idea just to talk generally and uh, one of the things I'd really like to do is just address the question of what went wrong and I really want to say I don't know. Um, the campaign, the lead up was absolutely perfect. I had incredible support in the back room from my coach and warm up crew. The training, the preparation, the taper, the facilities here, everything was just on point and perfect. And so uh, really I suppose then it just you know, comes down to the fickle nature of sport. You put yourself out there, you test yourself and, and you find out one way or the other. Because uh, as all weightlifters know, it's, uh, it's all very well being strong in your own time. But uh, when you're on that Olympic platform and you've got one minute to do your thing, um, that's, uh, that's, that's really a test like no other. But um, please don't uh, make it sound like... Um, no, sorry. I hope it really doesn't sound like... Um, you know, I, um, uh, I'm, I'm too shattered because stepping on that Olympic platform really is... It's indescribable. Um, it's it's energising, um, in, in, in a way which I just didn't expect. You know, um, I just felt so just connected with that moment, and and I think again this is one of those moments that uh, I'll be able to take away with me and 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 really I think treasure and. Um, uh, I know that uh, I've already thanked all of the people involved, but um, it bears repeating. Um, weightlifting is not an individual sport. In fact, I think none of what we consider individual sports here at the Olympics are individual sports. There's a, a team of people that stretches back all the way from our first beginnings in any sport to our final end points. And I don't just mean coaches and support staff, but it's everyone, you know, the people that offer you a kind word at a point when things aren't going so well, the people that offer you support and encouragement, they're all part of that team. And I'd just like to say, if, uh, if people are, are watching this from home, thank you all for being part of my Olympic team. I am so grateful. You have no idea. Thank you. Um, Laurel, Mitch McCann from TV3, congratulations on what you've managed to achieve by, by coming here and, and making history. And, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was that these Olympic Games have really put a spotlight on, on health, but also mental health. When you talk about people like Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka, so my question for you is, how are you after this experience, and can you talk me through what it's been like? That's a great question. Um, I'm not going to pretend that this is the easiest point in my sporting career, um, but it is what it is. You know, the, you put yourself out there, and you take what comes. And I think it's, I'm, I'm so grateful that the conversation about mental health is being had because I think it's so easy for, for people to, I suppose, forget that athletes are human, that we have all of the, you know, we suffer from the, the pressure, the expectation. Uh, and we feel the disappointment when things don't go according to plan. And um, I hope that conversation continues because uh, it's an important one to have. Um, you talk about this not being the easiest time of your career. Can you just explain to us, I guess, why you chose to put yourself through this, knowing particularly, I suppose, some of the conversations that would be happening around it? That's a great question. The thing that's always, um, I suppose, motivated me is, is the sport itself. Uh, I have found tremendous amounts of joy in weightlifting. 
Um, I found joy in the training. I found joy in just being with like-minded people. And that's really what's propelled me. Because Olympic Games, as, as fabulous as they are, are the end point. They, are, they aren't the everyday reality of you know, training, preparing, and putting yourself through the grind. And I suppose the motivation I have comes from you know, finding reward in that, in the training, in the, in the daily life of being an athlete. And, and really, I suppose, you know, that's, what's, that's what brought me this far, that's what's propelled me. And um, while there's obviously some pressure um, in these circumstances, um, that's just, it's never been part of the equation for me. I've just been motivated by the bar and just, yeah, doing what I do. And Laurel, you've talked about that external pressure and going on. What was it like stepping onto that platform last night and, and how did you try to block, did you try to block that out or what did that feel like? Well, one of the great things about weightlifting is that um, it's a sport that's founded in routine. We perform the same movements thousands upon thousands of times in training. And when you step on the platform, you sort of take confidence and I suppose some degree of comfort from knowing that you've been there before. And while the Olympic stage is, uh, is obviously different in some ways from other competitions in terms of atmosphere and, and, and excitement, uh, there's enough there that's similar that you can draw upon it. And uh, as I stood there on the platform, I knew exactly what I had to do. And uh, um, sadly, it uh, <laughs> didn't quite go to plan. One of the things that um, you know is talked about a lot is the history that you've made here. Um, you know, people say you're the first uh, trans female athlete to compete at the Olympic Games. There's a lot of articles about what the history is you're making here. H how does that sit with you that that you are making history here? And is that something you you think about and consider? And, and what does that feel like? Um, I mean, obviously I'm aware of those conversations, but uh, really, I haven't come here to change the world. I've, I've come here because sport is part of me, and it's, it's really part of what I want to do. And everything else is peripheral to that. Um, I've only ever wanted to be treated in the way that other athletes are treated. Um, I haven't set out to look for special accommodation, special treatment, or, or, or um, anything else really. Um, and so, while I'm aware that someone has to be the first, um, uh, that's not uh, been what's propelled me to come here and compete. Knowing now, I guess, what you do and how it felt coming into this competition and the conversations around it, would you put yourself through it again or would you encourage other transgender women to try and compete at this level? I don't really want to give advice because it's everyone's situation is so different and so complicated and and really it's a conversation, it's it's a decision that has to be made individually with regard to individual circumstance. So all I can say is that um, uh, rather than advice I can give encouragement that there are pathways out there and that if people are motivated um, they can pursue them and they can, I think, um, compete uh, just as any other athlete does. And um, if that's uh, um, the one good thing that comes out of this, then um, yeah, I'd be happy with that. And Laurel, you've had this debate swirling around you about the balance of inclusion and fairness. What are your views on the IOC's guidelines? I think that there is a conversation to be had. I mean, I'm grateful that the IOC has opened the door. I'm sure that the current rules and regulations will not be the final end point. Um, as it is, I think the IOC has tried to put in place regulations that apply to all sports and uh, I suspect that over time there will be more refinement and discussion and 
those rules will change. Um, I don't know what the future will look like for um, sort of rules of participation. It's certainly not my area of expertise. Um, I'm really just grateful that um, the IOC was able to take a leadership position on this issue and give me the opportunity to compete. Um, or how do you, how do you, I mean, one of the interesting things I think a lot of people will be wanting to know is how do you deal with what's in the peripheral? So, you know, criticism or controversy or articles and this sort of thing. And, and what do you say to, um, you know, critics that are out there that say, you know, it's not fair that you're allowed to compete or people that perhaps aren't, in, uh, I guess, informed as, as they should be? What do you say to them? Sure. I've tried really hard not to tell people what to think um, because... Really, I, I trust people to, you know, consider the issue and form their own opinions. Um, the one thing I, I would say, though, is that um, some people, I think, take emotion as the starting point for how they feel about the situation. And I think that no amount of facts will probably change the opinions of people that start from their feelings and, and, and base their opinions upon what they feel. Uh, and so to those people I say, just open your minds, open your hearts, and consider that, uh, you know, um, that um, perhaps there are a broader perspective that, uh, that, that is out there. We might just do one more question on each, if that's okay guys, so if you can I think that all weightlifters have a shared sort of, um, what's the word, uh, uh, a sense of camaraderie and belonging because we all know how much work is required to qualify and prepare for events like this. Uh, and as such, um, I think there's a shared understanding and, and that was really evident last night. Of course, people aren't uh, outwardly expressive because <laughs> it is game day and you know you need to focus on the task at hand. But um, I think um, I, I certainly didn't feel like there was any unkindness or unpleasantness in the room. And uh, I, I'm grateful for, um, I suppose, that uh, um, for, 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 for that experience. Not really, because all sport has rules, and I haven't seen the video, video footage, but I have faith that the referees that looked at that lift were following the rules as they're written, and their interpretation is correct. And while it's true there are challenge cards in weightlifting that can be played, you know, I think that uh, my team made absolutely the right decision. Um, strategically, Snatch has always been my stronger of the two lifts, and so it was probably better to keep that challenge card, of which there is only one, uh, for the clean and jerk. And so I have uh, every faith and confidence that my coach has made the right decision. And well, just two quick questions for you. If, if, you did, if you did get a medal, would you think that people may have found your participation in the competition more confronting? I don't know, because I, I, I don't know how other people would react. Um, so, um, well, it's an interesting question. I don't feel like I'm qualified to answer. And just lastly, what does the future hold for Laurel Hubbard? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, when I was asked, like, last night, I, uh, uh, I think I told someone that I'm looking forward to my career as a pub quiz question <laughs> or a Trivial Pursuit <laughs> card. Um, and that might sound slightly facetious, but there is a kernel of truth in that. Um, I've never been involved in sport because I'm interested in publicity or profile. Uh, and so uh, if it means that I now begin to descend into graceful obscurity, then uh, I'm okay with that. 
um, last one from me, Lowell. Um, there are a number of young people that will actually really be looking up to you and, and will be um, young trans New Zealanders that will see what you've done on the world stage and they'll be incredibly proud. What is your message to them and what do you hope that they gained from what they saw um, with you being on the Olympic stage? Well, if there's one thing I hope I can give to them, it's encouragement, not just for sports, but for all spheres of life. I think the world is changing um, and there are opportunities for people to be out in the world and, and do things just as any other person would do. And so if there's one thing I'd like to pass on, it's this, um, life is difficult. There are disappointments. I know I certainly have some today, as uh, do we all, but uh, if you just keep pressing on, it does get better.